Thanks for tuning in to our Breeders' Cup 2024 special right here on YouTube. You are watching our Breeders' Cup coverage here on Horsepower PSN. I'm Greg DePalma along with John Ardoon from the Rigas and Sheets. How's it going, John? Good, Greg. How are you? Doing good. This is the... This is it. I mean, this is, uh, I know it's not Christmas. We still have a couple months to go, but it uh, sure feels like Christmas for horse racing. Yeah, well, you know, this is the big two days. Everybody looks forward to these races and these days. And, you know, it's one of the big days of the year. You have uh, Derby, you have the Triple Crown, you have Breeders' Cup. Uh, and, of course, you have Saratoga and Delmar during the year. So. And speaking of Christmas, uh, this is also going to be are a great opportunity to have an early Christmas present uh, for everybody out there on YouTube because we have talked about this uh, with Chad leaving the, the show. Uh, just thought that this was the right time uh, where we decided to make the switch over to YouTube full time. So uh, we're going to do that. Uh, and uh, what we're going to do with our Patreon members, now keep this in mind because obviously uh, we have new Patreon members from just the past couple of weeks. So uh, we are going to continue to have some bonus uh, coverage over on Patreon for one more month only. Meaning, at, at this point in time, do not subscribe to Patreon any longer unless you know that you want the coverage only through next month. All right? So that's it. You're only going to have coverage for one more month and uh, check it out. So if you want to renew for one more month, great. And by the way, we're not getting rid of the Patreon. We're going to keep it. We're going to use it for specials and uh, things of that nature. So we're definitely going to make use of it. But uh, we felt this was the perfect time to go ahead and uh, get our coverage going once again at YouTube full time. I know there's a lot of YouTubers that are real happy about that. Uh, but hey, uh, now that you've uh, taken advantage of it, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to like. Make sure to share. Comments are awesome. YouTube loves it. And that's going to enable us to get to 1,000 subscribers, which we feel we're going to be able to get to a lot faster by making everything available only on YouTube. And again, that'll kick off at the end of November, starting in December full time. Uh, after this show and after our next show, uh, because we do have two shows, and I'll make sure that this is going to be the open for both. Uh, but we're going to have, uh, I am personally going to do just uh, some, some bonus coverage myself for Patreon. I'm going to go through some of the races and just give some uh, picks of my own. If you want John's picks, you know where to get them. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that ticker rolling right now. So if you would like to uh, find out how to get uh, some... Uh, of John's packages. You know where to get them. We have links in the description as well for that. Let's talk about race number. Uh, we're actually going to do 10. We're going to add a little bit of order here, uh, starting with the 10th race. And we're going to do that um, because we have uh, the classic that we're saving for last. That is actually race number eight. Is that normal? I always thought that the classic used to be the, the last race. That's what happens when football rules. They have a contract with NBC. I guess they're going to be showing no <laughs> or whatever, and they surrender to football. Shame on the Breeders' Cup. Wow, and that's college football. It's not the NFL. Yep, yep. and one one day a year in college, they couldn't. They couldn't. You know, it's wow. unbelievable. Well, and, and it's also because it's a West Coast deal, right? Right. All right. All right. So we're going to start off with the tenth, and that is the sprint. So this is a six furlong race. Uh, by the way, Bob Baffert, big surprise. He's the all-time leader with five wins, but he does not have a horse in the field. How surprising is that? Um, the last two winners of this race, same horse, Elite Power. Uh, and that was with uh, William Mott. And William Mott's yep. seen better days. Um, uh, has he picked it up, by the way, since last week at all, John? Not really, but okay. uh, don't worry. He'll turn it around when you least expect it. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the sprint here. This is a wide open race for sure. That's the way we like them. You have the three federal judge, a three to one shot, and the 10 uh, Mulligan, a seven to two shot. Uh, those are the two morning line favorites. And anytime you can do a three and four to one, basically, with your two morning line favorites, you know it is, uh, uh, can be, and more than likely, a open race. And that's what we got. So let's go ahead. And run through this quickly, John. You've got the one raging Torrent, a 10 to 1 shot, a good horse to go with, a 10 to 1, because this horse 
ran a six in May, ran a four last it, it last race in August. That's right, a four. Did it at Del Mar. Uh, seven for a longs, not six, but pretty close. That was a win at the Pat O'Brien grade two. And uh, this horse has really been strong over the last three races, including at Del Mar, and you're getting 10 to one. Yeah, this is my top selection. Hey, this we got good this year. I love for Sue riding for O'Neill. Going to get a good trip in here. I don't think he needs the lead to win. I think he's going to sit off. There's plenty of early speed. You get anywhere near 10 to 1, this is the right move. Absolutely. All right. Uh, next, uh, nothing really. I mean, look, Gun Pilot is, is not exactly even the worst idea for a long shot. Not the way I'm going to go. But still, Gun Pilot ran a 6 in April, a 7 before that in March, and 8 in May. The last two have been a little bit slow, though, 12 and 11. But the last, what, five races in a row have all been in the money, and you're getting 20, are you getting 20 to 1? Uh, do you like Gun Pilot at all as a long shot? No, I think you have better long shots. The three is federal judges I mentioned. I read Ortiz, Brad Cox combo. Matter of fact, I read Ortiz Jr.'s won three of the last sprints. So uh, well, this is on Elite Power, uh, the last two. But look at this line. It's really nice. Nine, nine, and six this year. He's coming off a of six back to back wins. What about federal judge at three to one? I want to play against him at three to one. I love Brad Cox, but the horse isn't fast. He ran a six top last time out. He may bounce off of it, he may repeat it. But a three to one, I don't want to. I don't want to find out. Okay, the four Nakatomi, uh, as in Nakatomi Plaza for you Bruce Willis diehard fans. Gaffleone on board, Wesley Ward training, and uh, this horse actually was in this race last year. Finished third as a long shot. It was twenty six to one back then. Anyway, yeah, but it was a completely different horse last year. Last year he had two sixes and a four. This year the best he can get to is an eight. I don't want this horse. Not at six to one. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, he going up a 26 to 1 running a 4. Oh, he ran a 4 in that race, though. Finished third. Right. Before that, he had ran a 6. So, yeah, he was cooking at that time, like you said, John, but just not as uh, fast this year, even though he has been 9, 8, 9, 10 about there. But 6 to 1, that's that's the uh, that's the issue there. Okay. Uh, the uh, 10 doesn't, excuse me, the 5 does not look fast enough? No, no good. Uh, the 6 is Ben Tornado. A 30 to 1 long shot that I'm definitely using. Why not? This horse has actually been a a, a, a a favorite in the last five races. He's got five wins out of eight. His, his sheet numbers, that's the most important thing this year 12, 9, 7. Getting better each time. The 7 was last time out at this distance, six furlongs. Three for three at six furlongs. 30 to 1, I think, is a must use in your, exot in your exotics. I agree. Absolutely a must use. Okay, next up, uh, looks like the seven's a little slow. No good. The eight is straight no chaser, a five to one shot who's run two fives in his last three races. Now he ran a five in May of 23, so that was last year, ran a six the race before that. But then, I don't know, something happened. Maybe it was the five because he didn't race again until May of this year and started off with a 12. But right after yeah. that, yeah, but he had some trouble. He took some more time off. He came back and ran it. I would use him only because the one is 10 to 1, the horse I'll be king. So there's plenty of horses you could throw in the mix. Yeah, and uh, coming off a of five, but uh, hey, he's run two fives. That's pretty impressive. Okay, the nine is remake. And uh, for eight to one, uh, even though this horse is a money machine, 50% uh, also, uh, as far as wins, uh, the best we have are a few eights. Yeah, this horse is from Korea. I don't think so. Okay. Mulligan, as I mentioned, the Pratt horse is 7-2. to two, And uh, I really like this line, John. I mean, if you take a look at the line from 14 the line last... Is, the line is very strong. He never runs a bad race. He has nine lifetime starts, five wins in three seconds. So he always shows up. Yep. And the uh, 11, Skelly. We've talked about Skelly a few times on this show. 17 of 18 in the money, first or second. Uh, has faded a little bit, though, the last three races down the stretch. He's first down the stretch, f ends up in second. Anyway, the last, the thing that's even more important, of course, the sheet numbers, 9, 7, 8, 8 in the last four. Uh, considering this horse has run fours, um, I don't know. You're getting 8 to 1, outside post. What do you think about Skelly? He's five years old. We played against him the last time. 
when we had it, gave out actually a $30 winner on this show, I think $27, $30, whatever it was. I think he's lost the step, and I would try to beat him. All right. So, John, you're going with the one, Raging, Raging Torrent. Torrent. And exact is with the six, Bennett Tornado, the eight, Stray Chaser, and the 10, Mulligan. One with six, eight, and 10. One with six, eight, and 10. Beautiful. And I'm going to go ahead and take the 10. So that's going to be my top horse. And I am going to go over one and six. So again, John's got one over six, eight, ten. I have ten over one, six. That's the Breeders' Cup Sprint. Now, let's talk about the final race. Don't forget, you can stay tuned on Patreon. I'll fill you in with a little bit of bonus uh, coverage. Uh, John is going to take off, uh, and uh, he's going to be heading to Vegas, uh, and uh, he's going to have a great time there. So check him out. All right, so we got the Classic. This is the big one of the year. Uh, this should go off about 540 on Saturday. Again, don't forget, it's the eighth race. So don't get tricked. A mile and a quarter. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of horses to like here. We know the big one. So uh, the morning line favorites, we actually have two of them. We've got City of Troy. The five to two shot is the three. And of course, the nine is going to be fierceness at three to one. So let's go through the field, John, starting with a good contender. And this is an import. This is Forever Young. Uh, this horse ran three sixes to start the year, then an eight last time out. That was the race in Japan. That just happened just a few weeks ago. So a lot of mileage between that race and here. But anyway, six wins out of seven. John Forever Young is the one. I must use, if you remember his race in the Derby, he may have been best that day. He had all kinds of trouble. Him and... Um... Sierra Leone were banging him through the stretch. Um, and I think uh, he's definitely usable. All right. And then we've got the two, Highland Falls. A long shot here. Brad Cox training. Uh, Brad Cox, uh, victory lane in the classic back in 21 with Nick's go. Anyway, this horse is getting 20 to 1. Uh, ran a 6 in January, then came back with a 10. He's coming off another 6, John. Uh, in that grade one win at Saratoga. So you've got a horse with two sixes at 20 to one. Yeah, but you're going to really have to run better than a six here. I mean, I understand it's Brad Cox, but I think you have better options. And uh, I don't think he'll be 20 to one because it is Brad Cox, but I don't like this horse in this spot. Now here's, uh, again, one of the morning line favorites. It's City of Troy. Ryan Moore, he's won a bunch of big races. Hayden O'Brien has trained a bunch of big races. Uh, and then you've got uh, just another import horse who hasn't raced yet in the United States coming off a seven last time out. What about City of Troy at five to two? You have to be out of your mind to bet this horse at five to two. Can he win? Of course he could win. He's six for seven lifetime. That being said, all seven of the races were on the turf. What makes you think he's going to run on the dirt? And yeah. even if the one's on the dirt, what makes you think he's going to run a three or a four? Again, yeah. I think, again, he could certainly win because he's a terrific course and he comes from the Aiden O'Brien barn and obviously he knows what he's doing. But you got to be crazy to bet this horse at anywhere near five to two. Okay. And we've got Mixto, the four is a long shot at 30 to one. Coming off a seven, I believe that is uh, the best we've seen. A grade one win. So that was at Del Mar. That was at a mile and a quarter. Everything you want to see coming into this race. Uh, but uh, look, he's a long shot for a reason. What do you think about Mixto? Uh, any chance that he's one of your long shot plays? No, he's bouncing off of the number that he ran last time out. I don't really like him here. Okay, next up. Oh, look who it is. It's Senor Buscador. Uh, Senor Buscador is a 30 to 1 shot. Wow, 30 to 1. Senor Buscador. Uh, but you can see why. He's kind of tailed off a little bit. A couple of eights, a 14 last time out. Matter of fact, hasn't finished first or second in those three races. Uh, looks like Joel Rosario is on board for the first time. We'll see what happens there. He's been at Delmar five times. He only has one win. What about Senor Buscador at 30 to 1? Well, I've always been a fan of this horse, but the problem is he can't run better than an eight. And unfortunately, an eight is not going to do it for you here. I mean, look throughout his career. He's run well and he's, you know, fires a lot of eights, but an eight's not good enough. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Those last year at this time, he has those sixes, but, you know, he is six years old now. 
And so that's not good. No. <laughs> that's real snooze. And, and, and by the way, the last three races, uh, he has lost by a combined 30 lengths. So yeah. Not good either. All right. Anyway, move on. Derma Sodagake. We've talked about this horse a few times, including, of course, in the Derby and the Breeders' Cup Classic last year, finishing second to White Barrio. So Derma Sodagake is back. Unfortunately, I mean, the numbers haven't really improved. Eight, that was about normal. But then 12-11 last two races. Exactly. He hasn't gotten better. That's the problem. The seven is Ushba Tesoro, a 12 to 1 shot. A seven year old import also raced in this one last year, finishing fifth. He was, uh, you know, he's coming in. I think he was, a pre- he was pretty high up there. I think it was, what, almost a four to one shot. But anyway, this year, five, that's pretty nice. But then a nine and a seven, maybe the seven after the nine is telling he's coming back to the five. Do you have uh, a liking at all for this horse? Seven years old, though. That's the problem. He's seven years old. He's shipping from Japan. I don't. I think you have better options. Yeah, thirty-five races for Ushba Tesoro, Pyrenees, an eight, a thirty-to-one long shot. Sherry Devoe is training this horse. Ten, seven, seven. Last three races, first or second, I believe, last six races. But we're gonna have to see a major uh, uptick as far as those uh, sheet numbers, John. Agree. Nine is fierceness. So we were all wondering, can Fierceness ever put it back-to-back together? And Fierceness did exactly that in the Travers win. Back-to-back threes. I guess the question now is, can Fierceness do it back-to-back-to-back? Yeah, I think he's going to actually run a zero off of this line. I've never been a fan of this horse, but the line is very strong. He had fives as a two-year-old. No one in this race has run five as a two-year-old. He has the potential. He finally lived up to it last time out. When I hated him, I thought he was an automatic throwout. I was wrong. He won. He put the threes together. He's got time off, and he's ready to run a new top, and I think he'll be very, very tough to beat. Yeah, and, you know, if, if you, and I don't see any reason why you won't in a, in a race with a lot of good horses, but getting three to one with fierceness is actually pretty nice. Yeah, hopefully they'll really go for City of Troy or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Uh, tap it trice. Boy, Tappet Trice, that was a derby contender back in one day. That was when he won the Bluegrass last year, but then had a dud in the derby. And ever since, well, things haven't gone all that well. Didn't run a five uh, at one time. This year, though, a seven and two nines coming off a a win at the the grade two race at uh, Aqueduct. But, uh, yeah, this horse had a lot more uh, going for him uh, than it has uh, turned out uh, overall. Agree. I don't like it. He is 30 to 1, though. Oh, I read Ortiz Jr.'s on board, it looks like, for the first time. He's read him two, two starts back, he wrote him, didn't he? Oh, I thought that was his brother. Oh, that's right. He's got one start there. Is that what it is? Is he one? Yeah. I always get confused with those little abbreviations okay. there. All right. Here's our boy, Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone, a 12. Now, here's the thing about Sierra Leone, even though he just keeps screwing us, is that the, the, the line just keeps trying to bring you back in. Yeah. Because he hasn't done anything wrong. Problem. You can you swear this horse off after every time you bet him and he doesn't show up. But if you look at that numbers, he's got a beautiful sheet. I mean, he continues to improve. Maybe he just doesn't like Saratoga. You know, that's what I'm thinking about. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But at 12 to 1, there's no question I'm using him. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, at 12 to 1, absolutely. The worst thing in the world that, sh- that we could ever do is jump off this horse at, at this time and then have him actually hit. So You're right. That ain't happening. Uh, now, the 12 is Arthur's right at 15 to 1 shot. Uh, and here's William Mott, which right off the bat should tell us that we would have to stay away from him at this point. Um, he had a 5 in June and then, uh, unfortunately, is going the wrong way since then. Uh, by the way, William Mott has two wins in the Classic, including in 1995 with a little horse named Cigar. Oh, Cigar was not a little horse, but okay. <laughs> uh, listen, you cover up the one big number he has, and uh, I, I don't like him in this spot. All right. Now, uh, here we have a, a really interesting long shot. Actually, um, yeah, well, let's start with this long shot, uh, Newgate. I'm going to play Newgate. Now, he's got Bafford. With 20 to 1. And you also, and by the way, this is his only horse in the field. And his sheet numbers are really good. Uh, I mean, he didn't start off well, but ever since the 19 and the 16 in 2022, 
everything since then except for when he went to dubai and let's just draw a line through that because that's dubai and anything could happen didn't have a good trip if we draw a line through that from november of 2022 to his last race he hasn't done anything wrong but go even or forward and his last race was a six so uh, with baffert at 20 to 1 with those numbers i think uh, i think he's worth putting in your exotics you could certainly use them. My only question mark is why are they putting blinkers on this horse? The numbers have been good. The horse has been running well. Now Baffert's making a, a blinker change. So to me, that would be a little bit of a concern. Hmm. But, you know, it just doesn't make sense. But it's Baffert, so you don't question certain trainers, and I certainly wouldn't be questioning him. And the last horse in the field is another interesting horse to keep an eye on, and that's next. Unfortunately, he's 14, uh, the post position, uh, but and he's eight to one. But he's won seven straight races, uh, and if you take a look at it, oh, and by the way, too, he's won seven straight races over 90 lengths combined. Um, yeah, but listen, I agree with everything you're saying. I'm actually going to use next, but just remember, he's beaten up on you know inferior horses for sure yes that being said you still won by 100 lengths his last couple yeah. you combine the races i know he wasn't running against much and he could handle the distance he's a marathon specialist but i have enough respect for that horse to throw him in so i like the nine clearly the best fierceness underneath the one forever young the 11 Sierra Leone and the 14 next nine over one 11 and 14. Yeah. I'm not going to screw around with uh, fierceness either. Uh, and again, it's probably just all about trying to make some money off the deal. So I'm going to go nine and I'm going to definitely go Sierra Leone again, like we just talked about. So I'll go nine over 11, 13 and 14. So that oh, will wrap it up, John. I know you haven't been feeling well, so I appreciate you giving your time. And uh, best of luck out uh, to your trip in Vegas. Uh, hope all goes well out there. And uh, look forward to talking to you on the other side. Fantastic. Thanks, Greg. Everybody, thank you. Have a great, great Breeders' Cup day. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Everybody stay safe and be well. Thanks, thank John. you, Greg. Thank you. All right. That's John Hardoon saying peace out. And as I mentioned, I'm going to do some bonus coverage here. One of the things I'm going to do uh, is uh, going to take a look at all these races that we just did and make sure that you are up to speed. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to recap everything for you. This video I am recording is going to be on... Just like the Open will be on both of our shows this week, the Close will be on both shows too. So I'll edit that and we will uh, provide, of course, Friday coverage on, uh, actually be on Wednesday, okay? And then uh, you're probably watching this on Wednesday maybe. And then Thursday will be Saturday coverage. So we'll split it up in two days. And this bonus stuff here is only going to be available to our Patreon members. Uh, and again, for you Patreon members out there, uh, we definitely, definitely appreciate uh, everything that you've been doing to hang on with us for the bonus coverage and all of that uh, for the last, whatever, year or so, uh, even the new ones. And like I said, you know, we're not going away completely on Patreon. So we're going to keep it going. Uh, matter of fact, you know, depending on how many Patreon members we still have, uh, we might be, you know, throwing some bonus picks uh, and uh, some interesting things that we haven't even thought of yet. So because we're not getting rid of it, okay. But uh, we completely understand if you're going to leave because it's not going to be the same, okay. So on a, on a regular basis, on a regular week to week basis, all of our shows, everything we talk about, will be for free on YouTube on our YouTube channel, okay. And again. That just has to do with the fact that one of the reasons was Chad leaving. Um, we really felt that the best way for us to kind of move things along on YouTube was to just give it all on YouTube. So I'm sure you guys are happy because, uh, again, you don't have to pay the five bucks a month now if you don't want to uh, because most of what we're going to be talking about will be available for free. Okay, so the other reason, though, is, is um, working behind the scenes 
Uh, we're doing a lot of interesting things with some of my clients, some of my partners uh, who are handicappers, and uh, we're going to try and piggyback off of that. And, and, and the best way to do that is to promote the free content over on YouTube. So I, the formula isn't finished yet, but uh, we're getting there. So that combination is just the reason that we felt uh, this was the right time to go ahead and do this and make that switch over to uh, Horsepower PSN. Now, I'll tell you what, if something happens over on Horsepower PSN where we're still not gaining traction, the first thing I'm going to do is, is move everything back over to Prime Sports Network. So it's not going to be, all right, we're going to try this out for a few months. If it doesn't work out, we're back to Patreon. No, it's, it's, I, don't, I don't really ever seeing us doing this Patreon uh, deal again the way it's set right now. So uh, what I can see is, is if we start to grow the way that we're supposed to, and that I hope we do with our numbers on YouTube, like I said, we're going to keep this going here on, on Patreon, and then we're going to provide even better bonus coverage, sort of like, hey, even if we do a lot of free stuff on YouTube, we're still going to say, hey, by the way, if, if you want some of this bonus stuff, uh, go to Patreon, and it's only $5 a month, and you can get to see this and, and check this out. So those those are things that we're, and, and I know I've talked about doing this for a while, but going up to New York and spending the day with Chad is something that I want to do. But, you know, I, I, I just can't make that trip unless I know for sure that I can plan it perfectly. And it's a long trip for me. You know, it's not like Saratoga's, uh, you know, jump off the plane and it's right there. I have to go straight to Saratoga, take a couple of planes probably. I might have to drive a few hours. So I can't wait to do it. But those are one of the things that we would definitely look forward to have bonus coverage here on Patreon. Let me go now and get uh, on track here with the main reason why um, you're sticking by. Okay, so let's recap the picks. Juvenile, race nine. John's going five over one, seven, ten. Five over one, seven, ten. So John is going to go ahead with Jonathan's way off two twelves, and then he's going one, seven, ten. I'm going ten over seven, so I'm taking Chancer McPatrick, 15, nine, and nine over the seven uh, gaming. Uh, 16, 13, first two races of uh, of his career. That's a Baffert horse. And uh, you're, uh, 16 and 13 is not exactly on par with the other two horses, but you're getting 8 to 1 for that. You're also getting uh, the activity over at Del Mar. All right, and then in the ninth race, excuse me, the 10th race, the Juvenile Turf, John's going 4 over 1 to 11. So John's big play here is Al Kudra uh, coming off 19, 14, 11. Those are the last three races on turf, 19, 14, 11. Did finish second to New Country, was it New Country? New Century, uh, last time out. But as I mentioned, Al Kudra has beaten uh, New Century two out of three, even though he didn't beat him last time. Uh, both of those horses are closers, so that could be a real fun race to follow. John, again, is going four over one to 11. Now I'm taking the five Zulu Kingdom. Uh, once again, a little bit slower like the other race, but still going in the right direction. 2016-14, three for three. You've got Pratt, you've got Brown, uh, and that's a pretty good uh, deal there as far as I'm concerned. I'm going five over four, six in that one. Then in the sprint, John is going with the one, and that is Ra Raging Torrent. And boy, we started off with Raging Torrent at 10 to one coming off of four. How about that? Three straight wins, two out, two wins at Del Mar, including the last race, which was a four. And again, not only it was a four, but seven furlongs, not bad. Anyway, and that was a great two race. Uh, so John's going with uh, the one here, Raging Torrent. He's going six, eight, ten. Those are going to be uh, his uh, other numbers here. One, six, eight, ten. I'm going with the ten, and that is going to be Mulligan. And again, Mulligan, another Pratt race. Uh, seven to two shot coming off seven seven five six this year. This horse has done nothing wrong. Uh, if you take a look at all of his numbers, started with a fourteen last February, then it was twelve twelve ten ten. That's this year. Starts as last year. Excuse me. Starts this year with seven seven five. Finally went backwards with a six, but that was a Grade One win. So I don't have anything wrong with that. Uh, Mulligan is my play, the 10 over 1, 6. And then in the classic, John is going to go ahead with the, we're both going with fierceness. 
and they were both going to hope we could still get three to one on fierceness. Uh, meanwhile, uh, John is going one eleven fourteen. I'm going eleven thirteen and fourteen. Now I'm going to go ahead and run over some of the bonus coverage here. And I was uh, prepping for the for the show, and I had about an extra 45 minutes. And I said, you know, let me take a look at all the other big races going on on Saturday, and uh, just quickly, you know, take a look at the numbers and the odds and and everything else, and just come up with just some uh, you know some quick observations, uh, just in case you uh, want to take advantage. Okay, so I'm going to try to line this up too with. Uh, let's see, I'm going to get the form up here. So just in case I need to follow along, uh, in case I miss anything, I've got the form and the sheets out. Okay, there we go. All right, so race number four is the Philly and Mare Sprint. Uh, the two horses I'm going to go with, Society is the six. That's the three to one shot. you got to ask Musin and Gaffalione. What, what, what I like here is um, this year in his last three races, 12.97. So that's a good run, 12.97. Uh, and last year, this horse, Society, okay, Society is the sixth horse in the fourth race, ran a three and a four. Let me just get that lined up here. Yeah, ran a three and a four last year. How excellent is that? So um, not bad for a Society, a horse that is right now at three to one. So again, he's one of the favorites, but uh, now it was last year. I get it, but at least his numbers are coming back here this year. Uh, and uh, it's Gaffleon and Asmussen. The long shot I like, mini long shot, is Pleasant, the three. It's a, uh, the Baffert horse. I'm not usually a Baffert guy, but it just seems like I am hitting Baffert a lot here. A 12 to 1 shot coming off a seven. Uh, so uh, Pleasant is another horse I'm going to keep an eye on. The fifth race, and that is the turf sprint. Now, there's a favorite called Cogburn, and I don't know if you're going to get seven to five on Cogburn because Cogburn is just a really good horse here. Um, this year, uh, in the last three races, this year, five, five, seven. I'm very impressive. All of those were wins. Matter of fact, um, he is five for five at this distance. It's a five for a long race. You've got Ired Ortiz Jr. on board. So, yeah, Cogburn is going to be the heavy favorite. Uh, but uh, I'm going to try to see if I can. Uh, I don't know if it'd be uh, if I can maybe get an upset or at least get a halfway decent exacta with Motori as the two, because in his last two races it's a seven and a five. Matter of fact, six of his last ten races uh, were sevens or fives. Matter of fact, five of them were sevens. One of them was, was a five. He's also three for three at Del Mar. So Motorios, Motorios might not be a bad mini long shot play. Uh, I don't really call him that. I call him a you know I call him a contender. All right, the sixth is the distaff. This is for three-year-old fillies and Torpedo Anna. Everybody's going to go after Torpedo Anna. Uh, but Torpedo Anna, even though she won her last race, it was a 12. Uh, the thing with Torpedo Anna is, man, she doesn't have a lot of competition. That's the thing. It's just strange to me because, you, you know, you would think Torpedo Anna is a big rep and all that. You would think she had threes and fours and fives, but she doesn't. But problem is she doesn't have any competition. Anyway, I'm not betting at races. Figured I'd throw that in there. Okay. The seventh is the turf race. Eight of 13 horses in this one are imports. Uh, the two horses, I'm going to go with a, a favorite and a long shot. The favorite is Rebels Romance. This is the 11. This year, we have four straight eights, nine before that. And you got the Appleby Buick combo. I'm going to try to uh, pair uh, Rebels Romance with Grand Sonata, the seven. That's Pletcher and Gaffleone at 20 to 1. Uh, two eights in his last four races is not bad, including a great two win last time out. So that's what I'm going to try to do in that one. And then we've got the ninth race, and that's a Philly and Mare turf race. And there are several horses in this one to mention. The two is Full Court Felicia, 12 to 1 shot. And the the, the, no, the line is really nice, 13-11, 10-8. That's, that's the four races this year, 13-11, 10-8. The last two, 10-8, were wins. Uh, Rad Ortiz Jr. on board. Grade 1 and grade 2 wins, by the way. 12 to 1. Moira, another good horse to look at. Nine straight in the money. Uh, this year, you've got 12, 8, 9, 12, 8, 9 last three. Last year, you had 8, 9, 7. So pretty good numbers. 8 to 1. Pratt. 
Uh, the 12 is Soprano at 20 to 1 long shot. This is an import. Did race in the USA, ran a second at Keeneland for the first time last, last time out. Uh, so I'm going to go with Soprano as a long shot. The favorite is the 5 to 2 uh, shot Warlike Goddess. Uh, that's the four horse. And the thing, though, this is a Mott trained horse. And again, right now, Mott's cold. So anytime Mott's cold or any trainer's cold, you want to go against that trainer until he breaks out of his slump. So uh, I, that's the way, that's why I want to point that out because it's a five to two shot favorite. So let's eliminate that. The three, by the way, Cinderella's Dream, that would be the way to go in my mind as far as top contenders. That's a four to one shot with Apple. Being Buick again, six wins out of seven. Uh, the numbers aren't that great though. Just 11, eight, 13, 13, 13. So it's not like the numbers are great. And that's, of course, the most important thing here on our show. But six wins out of seven, Appleby Buick, you, you understand all that. That's why I threw in those initial long shots. Because, you know, you got two favorites that have some you know, potential issues there. Uh, the 11th is the mile. And in this one, I've got four horses. None of them are, 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 fa- are the favorites, but... Uh, the shortest horse is the nine, Johannes, who's won four straight and seven of eight. You're getting nine to two, four for four at one mile. And this year with the four straight wins, seven, 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 and nine. The six to one shot, Carl Spackler is the 12 with Gaffleone, Chad Brown combo. Seven wins out of 10, including the last three and six out of seven. The line, 10, eight, seven, like that. Then the longer shots, both 20 to 1 shots, the two chili flag with Chad Brown and Arad Ortiz Jr. Grade 1 win, grade 2 win, grade 3 win. Ran a 7 in his last race, and and, and that was a second place finish. That's a closer. Keep an eye on that. And the 8 is another 20 to 1 shot. More than uh, than Cooks. Is that what it is? More than Cooks? Uh, Jose Ortiz and uh, Sherry DeVoe uh, combo there. Anyway, this year, 9-6. Okay, 9-6. Only two races this year, 9-6. It's only four years old, 20 to 1. And the last race we'll talk about here, bonus, is the Dirt Mile, the 12th race. You've got the one Saudi crown, and we know that this is a top horse. We've talked about him before, Cox, Jero, 5 to 1. You do have three sevens in the four races this year. Uh, you had one bad race. You can draw a line through that. Uh, the 9 is domestic product. And in his last two races, he ran a six and a five. That's a seven to two shot with Chad Brown and Pratt. The 10 is Muth. And this year, even though the 15 was the last time, the previous three were six, seven, 10, nine to two shot, Baffert. Uh, the 12 is Mafusa. Now, Mafusa is the one that really jumps out at me here because you're 12 to one, you're Gaff Leon, you got 10 wins out of 13. The last two races, both wins, were sixes. Mafusa, 12 to 1, Gaff Leone, the number 12. The 13 is Pipeline, another big long shot here. Uh, Sherry uh, DeVoe again, Velazquez, 30 to 1. Pipeline is the 13. I mentioned this one because the last two, uh, the last four races, okay, well, actually the last five, but in the middle, you got a bad one. So we're going to draw a line through that. The other four, 12, 11, 10, 8. Headed in the right direction. It's a long shot. It's an outside post. If I'm taking a long shot outside post, I'm definitely going with Mafusa the 12, but I figured I'd throw uh, the pipeline info in there. And then the last one to mention is Skippy Longstocking. And of course, we're going to mention Skippy Longstocking in their Breeders' Cup uh, coverage. Four to one shot for the 14th post. You got Safi Joseph and Ortiz Jr. This year, the numbers, actually the last three are not all that great. 9, 8, 10. And all the way at 14. But before that, a couple of sixes. But yeah, the last several races for Skippy Longstocking, nothing impressive on the sheet numbers, 14 on the 4-1. to one. And that's why out of all these horses here I've talked about, uh, it just, I mean, look, a lot of them are on the outside between the 9 domestic product and the 14 Skippy Longstocking. The only other horse I mentioned was one, the uh, Saudi crown. But it just looks like the uh, just I'd rather just go with the bargain here in Mufasa, the twelve to one shot at twelve. But anyway, uh, look, you want 
really good picks on this race. You know where to go. We've got the ticker. It shows you exactly, not just the ticker, but the description. Every you get all the links, including how you can get the packages from John. This is exactly the time that you want to do it. If you're ever going to buy packages from John, this is the time uh, to make that investment. Uh, John's been uh, pretty hot here on the show lately as well. So check that out. And we are going to uh, return again right here now. F again, now, as I mentioned, it's going to be on YouTube. Everything's going to be free now. But and through the month of November, and that's the reason we're doing that is because, again, we've had new members that have signed up. So we're going to let them carry it through for the month. So for the next month, we're still going to be offering. That's why I did this. Now, John couldn't do it because we've already given four races available for free. So John couldn't do it, but I could. So I, I, I'm giving you as much free information as a kid here on Patreon. But we're still in every show up until the, our first show in December. We're still going to be giving some bonus picks on Patreon. All right. So even though you've made the investment, there might be some people who are about to make an investment. Again, keep in mind, I'm going to be, we're going to be doing bonus picks for the whole month. So if you want to invest for the next month and that's all you want to do, well, take advantage because we will have bonus picks on Patreon once again for the rest of the month or the rest of next month, November. And that's going to wrap it up. So thanks for tuning in here to our Breeders' Cup coverage. Uh, and uh, this is a once in a year kind of deal. So thanks a lot. Uh, and uh, we'll see you soon. By the way, if you are uh, really into football, NFL, college football, handicapping, you can check out our Our Lads Football uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I do some videos there. And you can definitely check out Playbook Experts YouTube channel. That's where some of the brightest minds in handicapping, Hall of Fame handicappers, you know, the legends of the business, Mark Lawrence, Jim Feist. So if you want to know what's going on with the NFL and college football, Check out the Playbook Experts YouTube channel. Uh, Mark Lawrence, of course, has the playbooksports.com website uh, and a whole bunch of really awesome stuff. He's got his weekly football newsletter. So a bunch of really cool things that Mark has over there. You want to check that out for sure uh, if you're into football. And if you're into other sports like NASCAR, I still do our NASCAR coverage every week. Matter of fact, I'll be recording a show tomorrow. Uh, with uh, CJ Redoom from rotowire.com. He's an award-winning fantasy writer. So we've got the fantasy, uh, we got the NASCAR coverage too. Golf will kick off again uh, starting next year in January. So anyway, that's the deal. Um, I've said what I needed to say promotionally. Best of luck, everybody out there. If you have any questions, comments at all here on Patreon with anything that I've talked about today regarding the Switch, and if you have any questions, comments, or anything at all regarding picks, uh, what we gave you, uh, let us know. So again, this is just here for Patreon. Uh, let us know what you think and we'll see you again real soon.